body, many shall receive the spiritual enlightenment of India. The message of yoga will encircle the globe, he said. It will aid in establishing the brotherhood of man. But when I heard the word Guru, it frightened me, for I knew what that responsibility meant. His great burden is to be the representative of this 5,000-year-old tradition. This is a man with intuitive knowledge, extraordinary yogic powers. Yet he could perceive events that were decades in front of him. But his teachings caused controversy. He would be called into question, and everything he worked for would unravel. souls on a journey. People are at different levels in that journey. I think we all believe that there's more to life than what we experience every day. Yogananda happens to be what I would call a spiritual prodigy, a spiritual genius which means I had access to a domain of awareness that most people don't have access to. Like mathematical geniuses, we explored a much larger territory in the spiritual domain. Sometimes I used to lapse into the consciousness of my true spirit. Clear recollections came to me of a distant life in which I had been a yogi amid the Himalayan snows. He also had visions of seeing his guru. Throughout the ages, there have been mystics who come with special knowledge that helps us understand our place in the universe. Yogananda was born at the dawn of the atomic age, when modern physics would shatter our most basic beliefs about the nature of reality and pave the way for an ancient and hidden teaching to be received by many. Yogananda had been told since infancy by saints and seers that he'd be taking these teachings to the West. But he thought, how is this possible? You know, it was absurd he barely spoke any English. One day, my mind went away from Ranchi. I went to the storeroom to meditate and I fell into an ecstasy. a message so strong that it totally changes your life in a moment. And at that time, he'd been here about three years and probably thought this was his life work. I had found a school following the educational ideals of the rishis whose forest ashrams had been the ancient seat of learning. Overcoming restlessness of the body and mind by concentration techniques, achieved astonishing results. He established a how-to-live school. I wish we had how-to-live schools. You have to learn your grammar, you have to learn your math and your science. But you also have to learn how to live. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. 